Hi everyone and welcome back to the Ready Designer One channel. In today's video I want to start sharing my journey of learning to use Cursor AI and other AI tools to start building my own tools. So before I get into the whole concept and some of the code I just wanted to start with the why. So as you know, I've been making design templates in Framer and one of the feedback from the marketplace is you cannot use copyright uh, logos. For example, when you have um, companies logos, for example, in the SaaS, you'd say these companies are using this tool. And for example, you might put Netflix or Disney on there. So. I decided to make some logos, as you can see here, that are more likely to be copyright free. And now this is not guaranteed, but from research, these are just very generic single words, one words. And it's not likely that these words are going to be copyrighted because these type of words are not made up. Um, so you can see the style that I've gone with where I'm keeping it minimal, clean, and for example, it's trying to convey the emotion, um, for example, retro. So you got the retro font. So anyway, not getting too deep into the design, but as a designer, I thought of this concept starting with the problem and then just playing with designs in Figma. Um, so uh, the next bit is the code. So. Here we have, uh, I've got this on localhost at the moment. So just to demonstrate. So as you can see, where I am in the journey, I've just done a very quick um, flow of the whole app. And this is using Next.js. Um, so for example, you can imagine that these two cards will, will be like this. So if I go into the first one, you'll then get, um, the way I visualize it is you're going to see more images of the logo. You're going to see different variants. So, for example, you see it in dark and light. You'll see it in different sizes. And you may even see it in different scenarios with images. So this is a typical e-commerce app. And from there, you can go back home. And we have a title description. You have the price and then you have buy now. Now, in terms of the pricing, um, again, being a designer or a coder builder, you have to think of the whole journey. So I was thinking how to price these logos. So maybe individually, they could be something like $5, right? Um, uh, but if you were to buy the whole pack, I was thinking $28. So Let's just have a think. Uh, so yeah, let's take you through the whole journey. So if we click on buy now, let's see if this works. So this is using Stripe. Again, this is with Claude. Oh, sorry, this is with Cursor AI. So I'm just going to take you through the journey of testing this. So this is currently in test mode that I've set this in Stripe. So I'm just going to put in some test data. And this is something that Stripe do provide you with. And I'm just going to put in some mock data here. So John Doe and postcode pay. So this is where you think of the whole journey, right? So, um, and then let's just download and see if this works. Okay. So let's go to our downloads folder. So here I've been downloading a few. This is what you can see. I just downloaded this now. So let's open it up. You get an SVG and there you can see the SVG is right there. So this is the whole journey. Um, now what makes this a bit different is I thought to myself, and this might not be correct, because again, I'm not, a, um, I'm not an expert as a developer, but do you actually want these packs to be in the public um, in, on the website, for example, do you want it to be easily accessible um, without them paying? 
So this is what I asked Cursor AI. Uh, let me go into Cursor. So you've probably seen Cursor and I've just started to get to grips with it. So I asked the question by Command K and said, how can we uh, make it a bit more secure? So Cursor AI suggested to put this on a private folder and somehow it does its magic where um, it will only give that file once they've paid. Um, so yeah, if we go back home, now what I wanted to do is just say, why did I go with Stripe versus Lemon Squeezy? So again, I asked, um, I think, did I ask Cursor or I asked ChatGTP? So there's a lot of tools. Um, but why go with uh, Lemon Squeezy or Stripe? And it's simply down to the fees, right? So Stripe is cheaper, um, especially if you intend to scale. So if there's going to be, let's say, a thousand purchases, you're going to save a lot on fees. Um, obviously, Lemon Squeezy is a lot more easy to set up. So, for example, I could, um, I could just get a, create a product on Lemon Squeezy and, and get the link, and it will just you click on the button, and then Lemon Squeezy will then have the whole checkout process. Whereas Stripe, you have to go through the process of integrating it. And this is what I, this is the great thing about Cursor AI. So what, what I'm hoping to do is on the next, uh, the next video, I'm going to then try to make this look similar. Well, exactly like this, this type of design. Uh, let's just go back. And then the next step is to make this production ready and then hopefully I can then make this live. So that means getting a domain, making it live, um, marketing. So the marketing side, also you have to think about is the SEO. So if you search up uh, SVG logos, the search volume is, 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 is not large, but the competition is low. So that's something I'm gonna rely on um, aside from building in public. So yeah, this is basically what I've been doing over the weekend and just a very quick demo, right? So let's just say that I wanted to make these because these for some reason have like a max width, right? So if I go back to, we go to the main page and what you can do is not sure why there's a max width. So I do have a background in Tailwind, but maybe because of the aspect ratio. So what you can do, you can highlight a piece of code and then you can do Command K. So now you use natural language. So I would like these cards to be full width. And I might not be saying it correctly, but this is another thing about getting to learn or use these tools is the prompting or the prompts. So let me just see what it comes back with. If I'm if I actually said that properly or not, right? I have no idea if I did or did I actually change the whole thing? So here it's, it's showing you what, you what it will change. So I'm just gonna hit accept, right? And then save. So I was kind of hoping that it's gonna just update. So let's just see, command refresh. So that didn't really do anything. <laughs> let's just go back home. So again, not, not blaming the AI, it's more about my prompting, right? So we got, grid core one two large it's three so it's my own see so if you're a beginner you not you might not know this but i'm setting it to be four and three so let me just select that and say i can already see that so command k i would like um i would like the 
the card to be columns of two on desktop and then on mobile it will be one generate so I kind of know the answer already but I just wanted to see accept and I'm pretty confident this is going to work so so you can see here on the medium screen and above it's going to be calls two uh, and then below it's going to be calls one so save boom nice very nice let's just see if that actually does yeah it stacks great okay so that was a tiny demonstration on cursor AI and as you can tell I'm still getting to grips with um, with using the tool but and again this idea is not groundbreaking it's not a massive crazy idea it's very simple uh, what I'm trying to do is start simple start small learn the tools gradually when you get comfortable you can start building bigger apps so hopefully you enjoyed this video hit the like subscribe and I'll see you in the next video